to speak to him in addition to that which you have said. No man come before him empty. No man come before him without an anticipation of a touch. I want you to begin to ask of him, what are the burdens you have come before him? What are the burdens you have come before him? He can lift it up. He can lift it up. He can lift it up. Lift it up. Begin to ask of him. To draw, to draw, to draw, draw from you again. <laughs> we've come to draw, we've come to power to draw, healing to draw, deliverance, draw. And the Lord said to the woman by the pool, he said, if only thou know the water I'm about to give unto you, you will have said unto me, take and drink from it. He said, the river where I'm about to draw from and give unto thee, he said, thou will not be cast again. That river is by the Spirit. That river is the taste of the throne of grace. And the book of Revelation said, there is a throne by his presence. He said, flows from the throne is the river of life. Is the river of grace that flows to the tree of life. Anyone that drinks of him will never be tested again. Anyone that drinks of him will never be tested again. And she ran into the city and said, Come here, see a man that have told me everything about my life. Anytime we encounter him, he tells us the things about our life. I don't know with the taste you have come to his presence. I don't know how thirsty you are. I don't know how hungry you are. I don't know how provoking you are by the spirit. I don't know the burdens you are here with. But he is about to give the river of life. I want you to ask of him. Tell him the levels of your hunger. Tell him the levels of your taste. Tell him if he only you needed a cup, or you needed two cups, or you needed a bowl, or you need a drum, <laughs> all that you will ask, it shall be given. He said, ask and it shall be given unto thee. In accordance to our hunger, he gives. In accordance to our test, he gives. Can you ask of him? Hmm. I am here this evening with a burden. we need a freshness of your presence we need a freshness of your presence <laughs> name in Jesus name Psalms number 68 Psalms number 
Ibrando skapandi ala su gabrede de asoka bide na mosi kadaraba. Psalms number 68. <clears throat> Verse 19. To the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Today we'll be looking at the burdens of the fathers. The burdens of the fathers daily he beareth our burdens praise be to the lord the god that daily he bears our burdens there is always a burden from the fathers there is always a burden that a parent takes there is always a burden that one takes as a father the father we have is the creator of heaven and earth. The father we have is he that mandated the beings to be. The father we have is the one that carried daily. Who is a father? A father can be any biological uh, person that gave birth to a son. A father can be anyone that gave birth to a son by an intercourse between the opposite sex. He can be called a father. A father can also be one that begot someone or that adopt someone. He can also be called a father. A father is a burden bearer. A father is a responsible person. A father is who holds upon the shoulders of everyone. A father is he that takes the tears of all upon his shoulder. Who is your father? There is a relationship between a son and a father. There is a relationship between a daughter and a father. Your relationship between the father and as a child determines what you receive from the father. Every father is a burden bearer. Every father is expected to take responsibility of his children. Romans chapter 8 verse 15. He said, for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear but you have received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. For you to be a son, you must be a recipient of receiving. For you to call one a father, you must be acceptance of that which he gives. A father is a giver. A father is a link. He said, for you do not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again. A father is he that takes a son out of slavery. No father, no responsible father will see a son in bondage and will allow him to be. Any father that leaves a son or a daughter in bondage is not a father. Slave here again means that you was once out of the fatherhood. You was once not a son to the father. He said, you are a slave again. He said to fear, but you receive the spirit of the sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father, until you receive before you call him Abba, Father. You must receive and not to be a slave again if they say not to be a slave again that means there have been a certain time that you were not a son 
there was a time that you were enslaved in an island. That there was a time you were in slavery. That you are not born to him as a father. But he gave you something and you receive. Now you become a son. We were once not the sons and the daughters of God. We were once aliens. We were once sinners. We were once out of picture. But he gave us something and we receive. And that which he gave us now qualifies us to call him Abba, Father. What did he give us? He gave us his spirit. When he gives you his spirit and you receive, he said, blessed are they that believe, that believe in him and even in his son. He said he had given them the right to become the sons of God. John 1, 12. That when you receive him and believe in his name, in the name of the son, he has given you the right. You must receive to become a son. If you don't receive, you are not entitled to be a son. And if you don't give, you are not entitled to be called a father. A father is a giver. A son is a recipient. A father to enslave and a father to freedom. We have fathers that enslave their children. We have fathers that give their children freedom. Either of it, they have burden to execute the duty. To enslave, you must walk. To make free, you must walk. Either of it is a burden. It is called the burdens of the fathers. The burden of the fathers. Who is now a son? A son. Is he that has all created relationship with one to be a father. A son is he that creates relationship with another to become his father. When we say we have received and there is no relationship between we that we receive from, then we are still yet to become sons. Get me right. I come again. A son is he that creates relationship with whom he receives from that he might become a true son. A daughter is he that or she that creates relationship with whom she receives from for her to become a daughter. In this context, I might be still talking as son, but if I talk as a son, I'm talking about both sides. We understand? So I might not be saying son and daughter. But as we go, either of it I talk, you should know that I'm talking to you. Just put yourself as the she or the he. Anyone I call, you are the one I'm talking to. A son or a daughter is he that is submissive to the counsel of the father. If you are not submissive to the counsel of whom you call the father, then you are not a daughter. If you are not submissive to whom you call a father, then you are not a son. A son submits to the father. A son is he that shares same genotype with his father. Romans chapter 8, the Bible says, And God knows us in advance, that before we were created, he knows us in advance, that Christ being the firstborn, and we the brothers, the brethren of him. For we to answer the same father, Abba, then we must be related to Jesus. The burden of God, the creator as the father, is that his sons must look like him. Jesus was a blueprint of God, was a blueprint in human form of how God intends all sons and daughters to look like. The burden in the heart of God after the fall of man is that man will become like him. That was why in Genesis chapter 1, from verse 26 to 28, while he's about to create, he said, let us make man in our own image. The image that they will be subduing, take charge, and dominate all the creation. 
the burden in the heart of God why he was creating you and I is that we should become like him we should become gods on earth that is why Christ was telling the Pharisees he said we well, haven't you heard that it was written that ye are gods the psalmist wrote that we are gods the thoughts and the burden in the heart of God is that we become like him that was why when the sin was much on earth, when the time of Sodom and Gomorrah came nearer, when the time of the flood came nearer, the scripture said it grieves him that he created man. It grieves him the burden in the heart of God. The burden in the heart of God. A son is he that shares same spirit with his father. Romans 8 verse 16, he said, My spirit and God's spirit confirms that I am a child of God. My spirit and God's spirit confirms that I'm a child of God. If you claim to be a son of a father, then you must share the same spirit. If you claim that I am your father, then you must bear the spirit I bear, the burden of a father. I see why some will be seen on the street and they will say you are, it's like you are the son of so 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 person. The way you laugh, the way you smile, or the way you do things, you look like somebody I know. And you will say who? They will call your father's name. You say yes, Ni Aaron Shine. They will say of course because I saw a sign. I saw the way you were behaving and I know you can be related to him. A son must bear the spirit of the father. Luke chapter 3. Verse 22. We are driving somewhere. There is a burden in my heart. And the Lord wants to deliver something. Luke chapter 3 verse 22. It's in the B part. We get it. But let's read the entire verse. Luke chapter 3 verse 22. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in a bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. A son is whom the father is pleased with. The question is, is your father pleased with you? Whom you called a father, is he pleased with you? He said, and the Holy Ghost came upon him in the bodily form like a dove. And there was a voice from heaven that said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. A son must be beloved by his father and the father must be pleased by him. The question is, can your father be bold to say, this is my son? Is your earthly or the spiritual father boldly to say, this is my son. Hmm. A true son pleases the father. A true son brings glory to the father. Do you bring glory to your father? A son is he who maintains a relationship with his father that when i call god my father then there must be a track record that i'm following i am following i am following hebrews 12 verse 2 looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith that i call god christ my father then there must be followership of his status Romans 8 verse 15 8 says, For you did not receive the word received here. You did not receive, uh, sorry, he said, For you did not receive, that's the A part of Romans chapter 8 verse 15, which means the word received here means a son must always be at the stage of receiving. A true son always receives, as we said earlier. If you claim to be a son and you don't receive counsel from your father, then you are not a true son. You must always be at the point 
of receiving. We are in the season where people always want to be identified with someone. The Lord is putting a burden in my heart. I have seen so many claiming some people are their father. But when I look at them, I don't see the qualities of that father. When you say someone is your father, then the quality or the resemblance, little or more, must be seen to identify. When you say someone is your father and there is no relationship, you don't receive. You don't receive. A father can only give to a son that is willing to receive. When a father gives today, gives tomorrow, and there is no relationship in continuation, don't you don't receive. Why we pray and we don't receive? He said, because. He said, ye pray and ye receive not, because ye pray amiss. There is a double mind when you pray. There is a two thoughts when you pray, because there is no relationship with the father. When you pray and there is no answer, it's because there is no relationship between you and your father. When you ask of a father, Baba, I want to buy a shoe. Baba, I want to buy a handkerchief. Please give me. It is sold or it's been sold for 15 era. And the father said no. It means even though he has 1,000, because there is no relationship, he will refuse to give you. Have you ever noticed in a house that there is two kind of a people? One will go single-handedly to a father. Baba, I need 200 naira. I want to buy chingon. He wouldn't ask. He would give him the 200. But you that has no relationship, you will come. Baba, I need 15 naira to buy bairu. You say, Banalish. Yours is important because it's a bairu. You want to use it to work. His is chingon and it's above 15 naira of a bairu. But he refused giving him. Why? There is a relationship. Because that son is always stubborn. That son is whom the father will say, when Kevin Kaya and he will not do, do this to me, he will refuse. When the father says do, you refuse to it. Don't think he will ask and you will receive at ease. Your father gives only when you have a relationship with him. If there is no relationship between we and God, we can cry from now till morning and there will be nothing. The testimonies we had earlier is not because there is a man that is anointed, but there is a God that has a relationship with his people. It's a betting that I have a relationship with these people. That these people will call me, I will answer, because I have a track record that they receive from me and I give and they have following. When you don't follow, you don't receive. When your characters don't exhibit as your parents, you don't receive from them. We claim we have fathers. What are the symptoms in your life that is true of your father? Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1, he said, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is what? It's right. Obey your parents in the law. A true son is an obedient child. A son creates a consistent relationship with the father and to receive. Your kind of relationship with the father will determine if you are being free or enslaved. Your kind of relationship with your father will determine if you are being free or you are enslaved. The kind of relationship you will have with your father. Sometimes people will enter to a certain house and they will start asking questions. Is this boy truly this man's son? Or did he adopt him? Have you ever noticed things like that? That you have a that one night, everyone on my chimney, is it truly these children are theirs or are his? Because the way he treats them is like he adopted them. It is because of the relationship between the father and the sons. The burden of a father. I was so burdened some few this 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 topic came like three weeks or so 
you will have seen a post and I posted a picture of me and one of my father, Apostle Joshua Selma, and I put the burdens of the father. If you recall, I posted that picture together. That was when the word came, the burden of the fathers. Because I sat and I was looking and uh, for some time before now, I, I, all, I am free talking to people. I am free with people. But it got to a period that, you know, there's this word they call men of God this period. They call you Papa. They call you Daddy. They call you Father. And you are smiling. I get burdened in the heart. When you understand the titleship or the name, what it entails, what is hidden in that name, you will not sleep. You will not be happy to write. If they say, Papa, you say, yes, my son. No, 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 no. There is a burden that should come out of you. What are you giving to that son? A father is responsible to give to a loyal son or daughter that which he or she desires. When you call me a father and I cannot meet up to your desire or to your want, it bothers my heart. Everyone that is in line in tune with God, that understands the things of the Spirit, anytime you call them those names, it creates a burden in the hearts. And sometimes I sit to pray and sometimes I groan in the Spirit because there are certain times people call me because of their burdens and I will cry and pray over it. And within some time I feel there is no answer and I was asking God why. The answers are not coming. And he said, is there a relationship between you and that person? Even though when she calls you, she said, Daddy, or she said, Baba, or she said, Papa, I am calling you because I have a problem. And the Lord is telling me, why sometimes, not all, why sometimes that person that calls you don't receive answers? Even when you pray, it's because there is no relationship. I check by the Spirit. There is no track record that this is your truly son. There is no track record that this is a loyal son. He might be loyal when he calls you. She might be loyal when she is close to you. But behind you, he or she is not a true son. That is what the Lord told me. The burdens of a father. Don't be a true child in the presence of your parent. And outside, you are something else. You will never receive. Even when they give, it will not work. The problems of a father. We must be careful talking about a man behind him. Whom you have called a father or a papa. Be careful when you talk behind him. Because the name you call him is not because he can give back to you. But because there is a relationship by the spirit. And that name is by the spirit. The linking is by the spirit. And he that coordinates the relationship is called the Holy Ghost. He said he knows the intent thoughts of our heart. Even before we speak. So when you speak behind whom you call the father. Then the Holy Ghost will intercede for him. He might not be there, but the Holy Ghost is there. That is why sometimes the Lord will, after seeing that burden, that you are trying to meet up to a son's demand, but because that son is hitting you or eating you backward, the Lord will sometimes reveal a glance of what they do against you. I have, by the Spirit, with the, to the glory of God, seen some pictures of people that calls me a father or that looks up to me and I see by the spirit the Lord reveal things they do or say behind me and I want you to call me for a need and that person should receive never I might not say anything but even you ask for prayer I might pray no matter how I say there is a relationship that you are broken by the spirit what I say, what I declare, is not me that doing it. I am just a channel, a portal that releases that grace. And because whom does, or whom is the doer, is the Holy Ghost. I think it's because I was bothered. Why are some people's prayer not answered yet? And he said, there is a relationship. There is a disobedience behind you. And I must put that as a mark. And some people can only come because they needed something. After they receive, they will go. And you will never see them again. 
Hallelujah. The burdens of a father. I want to help our life. I am, I am being helped by God because of this. So I want us to also be helped. There is that burden. Some will only come because they have problem. When they receive and they are gone, you don't see them again until there is another problem. Then you will not receive again. You don't come to God when you have headache and say, God, have mercy, headache, 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 and you are healed. And you will now go back to the world. You go back to your drunkenness, to your stealing, to your adultery, to your fornication. And when you have problem again, you now come back to God. There are two kinds of fathers. Those that oppose and enslave the truth. John chapter 8, verse 34 to 44. Here the Lord is talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees. When they approach Christ, when Christ healed someone on, in the synagogue, when Christ did a, every day, I check his words. I call him up the Father because every evening I check, make my life, is it in alignment with my Father? I call him up the Father because I know. I choose the way. Are you in relationship with him? Can he boldly call you a daughter or a Can you cry out to him? For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the discipline and admonishing of the Lord. There are fathers that brace the children to the admonishing of the ways of the Lord. The burden of a true father is to say that his son or daughter are sharpened to the ways of the kingdom. The burdens in the heart of the father is to see a son or a daughter grows in all that pertains life and godliness. Any true father that rejoices when his son or daughter fails is an evil father. He is termed a Pharisee. Pharisees are the people that reflect themselves as true men, but they are wrong people. These were the people of the theology. These were the people of the book, but they refuse to accept that which is from Christ. And he said, you are of your father, the devil. Because if you are of your father, of Abraham, you will have received and believed that which I say. A father that enslaves and a father that gives freedom must be with a relationship when we follow men online and we call them fathers the question is have you ever prayed for any of them have you ever prayed for those men you call fathers in the Lord you might not have a a personal relationship as in face to face but you are being fed through their spiritual uh, 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 foods they release spiritual balanced diet they give have you ever prayed for them i told us that the relationship is by the spirits that who vets the relationship of a father and son is the holy ghost and if you pray for him, even he is not there. That is why some people will tell you, I was watching in the television, and while they were praying, I connect and I receive my healing. It's because there is a relationship by the Spirit. Have you ever gone on your knees and you prayed for whom you call the Father? Have you ever even prayed for your biological father or parents in completion? And you see your father is not doing well. You have always asked and he's not giving you. Have you ever prayed for him? Or do you always complain? The burden of a true father is to see that you receive. When you don't receive, it means you are also failing in your own assignments. 
every now child also is a potential father tomorrow. Every now child today is a potential father tomorrow. If you assume that you are a son always, no. Tomorrow you will become a father or a mother. Will you be happy the same way they respond to you? By election of grace to his glory, there are people that can, that can even give birth to me. They call me father. Do you know the burden it is in my heart? There are people that we are mates. There are people I senior. There are people that are uncles, aunties. There are people that are parents. There are people that are equal to even grandparents. They call me father. Do you think that I should just accept it and laugh? No, there should be a burden. Because God will ask me, what have you done as a father to them? They don't just call you a father because you are a spiritual person. No, they call you a father because there is something you have to give them by the Spirit. I accept the name. Do I dispense the responsibility of the name? If you accept the name, do you dispense the responsibility of that name? That I am a father to some people now. I am also a son to others. Because you are a father does not disqualify you from being a son to somebody. Are we together? My parents are in Kaduna. I am a father. My children will call me father. Cool? Is that? But that does not mean I am not still a son to my parents. They also, I will call them father. Is it the same spelling or different spelling? We are all fathers. The burden they carry, I carry the burden. You are seated here. We might meet on the road and you will say, Papa. Yes, I accept. But somebody also calls you Papa. Do you dispense your responsibility as a Papa to him? Somebody will call you mama. I have seen in the social media some people, one of mama nani, spiritual mama. I don't know how they call it. Mama, mama. Do you dispense the motherhood responsibility of a mama to them? Do you know that you will answer for yourself? We take some things casual. We take some things as if it doesn't matter. It matters. The Bible says little, little foxes spoils the vine. What we think, it doesn't matter. It matters for the kingdom of God. There are people that today, if they call me, they have issues. I will not sleep. I, I, I mean it. If they call me that I am in a problem, I will not sleep. I will call them two, three times. If I didn't call, I must call them. Then I must follow up. Is there results? Or if I should hear anything happen to them, or I didn't see them in a day or two, I will call them. I didn't see this brother for like two days. I called him. Is that? I will call and say, if I don't call you, there is a problem. There is a problem. Seriously. You know, even though you don't come to me, there is a channel you will link to me. When you pray and you call my name, there is a spirit that will always remind me that there is this song you forget. I don't know what he was doing. I don't know why I remembered him. Even though for like two weeks or so I didn't see him, I don't know why it did. I, I was just bothered to. I have I, this book was here when uh, my sister in law came back. She saw the book was in my front. I opened, I was looking for his number too. I don't know why the burden came. I don't know why what he has been doing. But I know there is a song, there is a thing. Because after that, the Lord now tell me it's the burden, it's the burden, it's the burden, the burden of the fathers. You can put me on my toes. You can put me not to sleep. Even I like it or not, I will not sleep. Because if you do something behind of a true son or a daughter, I will not sleep. Even I'm not aware you do it, I will be bothered. Because whom you call is above all. The Lord that is above is above all. He will not let me sleep. Because you agree with me as a father, then he will not allow you more. Sometimes I wake up in the night, even I don't want to pray. I just want to feel wrong. He will make me wake up to say something. And when I say I know it's because of somebody, the burden 
of a father. Do you know how many times the man of God sleep? Do you know how many hours? When I was looking at my father in the Lord, I, I, I wonder how, how many times he sleeps. He's from here to here in the night, in the afternoon. When do he sleep? When did they study? They are flesh and blood like us. Have you ever thought of that? You call somebody around 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and he picks your call. And he said something or two, and you drop the call, and you forget about him till another day you have a problem. Is that the relationship between a father and a son? Do you know that burden they wake up with? Sometimes I call my spiritual fathers late, and I wonder they pick instantly. I feel the burden. I never knew all these things. It was later on when the Lord is graduating us from levels to levels. I understand there is always a burden. And I don't want to hold it to myself. I have to share it so that you can grow with that thing. And you don't need to wait until you are there. Hold to it that before you get there, you have created a track record that when you get there, you will be floating by the Spirit. You know, one thing with fathers is that if they don't tell you the truth, they allow you to experience it first. They are not true fathers. As a father, if I am walking here, God forbid, and there is a needle here, or a broken something, and I match it, and it injured me, and I refuse to pack it because my daughter is following me, I say, let her match it. Let her feel the pain that I feel. Am I a responsible father? When I feel it, before she comes, I'll say, wait, and I'll pack it. Even though there is pain, I will not want her to match it. The burdens of a father. Why God allows sometimes we pass through some pains is because he wants us to know the pain, the intense of it. When you call me, you are in the same pain in a certain time. I will pray from that burden I have experienced. The burdens of a father. Sometimes when people call me, even though I am among the family, you will find that I will just get up and enter inside and I will be prayed because what they are telling me, I have passed through some experience and I know the intense pain of it. The burdens of a father. Another man's son is another man's father. Another man's son is another man's father. When I called my father in the Lord on, on Wednesday, uh, Prophet Edwin Simon, when I called him, immediately it didn't ring twice. He picked. God bless you. God, God lifts you. He was praying instantly. I did not even say a word. He began to pray for me. God bless you. You are lifted. You are covered. Your enemies will be put to shame. I see God lift. He began to prophesy. And I felt peace. Even before I uttered, I called him to say something, but he began to speak to my life. Before I even tell him why I called him. A father. When he sees your call, he'll be happy because he knows this is a son. Create relationship with whom you call fathers. Which means everyone is a burden bearer. Everyone here is a burden bearer. If you are not called a father, you'll be called Yaya, or you'll be called an uncle, or you'll be called an auntie. It means you are above in one thing or the other, be it physical or spiritual. For those that are, able, that are like my parents, they are age mates of my parents that will call me daddy. And they call me daddy. It, it doesn't mean that I, am, I should disrespect them because they call me. No. It means that I should be crying inside of me. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. How can somebody that I'm supposed to greet, good afternoon sir, will call me father and I'll be happy. Jesus. It pains me inside. I don't know how you feel it. Well, that is how I feel. I, it, it pains me. It, I have this burden that why? Lord, if I will be called a father and I cannot dispense your words to them and I cannot go on my knees to pray for them, God, let there be division between us. May they never see me to call me a father again. You identify me as a father and I cannot pray for you, I cannot do anything for you, then I'm not qualified. 
I called you a son and there is no relationship. Then tomorrow I cannot call you a son. There are people, if I am commenting in the Facebook or in social media, I can be confidently say, my son. There are people, even they call me Papa in the social media, I will not respond to them as son or daughter because there is no relationship. There is no track record that this person is of me. I will just say, God bless you. I don't know if you understand this. I am telling us some secrets that you tomorrow if you see on social media, you will be sensitive. That is why some people might chat you one, two, three times and you will not respond. It's, because, it's not because they did not see it. There is no relationship. There is no relationship. You chat me, hello, papa, hello, daddy. They will change the name, hello, papa. They will say, hello, daddy. They hello, sir. They put different so that they will attract my attention to rest. It's not sometimes I see it, but what is in me, I feel this person, I don't know how it comes, but I'll just feel I'm concentrating on something else. But there are people if they say hello, even they don't put anything, they just say hi. I will respond quickly. There is a relationship by the spirits, the burdens in our hearts. I always find it's a burden. Anytime I feel it's about Monday to pray, or it's about Wednesday, I, there is a burden of my heart. What, Lord, do you want to give through me? When it is hours of hours to that day or to that minute, I get burdened in my heart. These people will come. What? No, he always comes from the upper father. Because I am also a son to him. I also want to receive. That is why I have told us this secret that anytime we are done, I also want to play it and listen because that word is from a channel of the spirits that spoke. And I also listen. Sometimes I listen to my words and I will shed tears because they are not of me. I might be the container. I might be the vessel, but the words is from the Father. We are all seated here being talked to by the Abba father so that some things i i bet you you know why i'm saying this week some things will just open up some answers you have been waiting for long it will just come up because after this you will create a channel of link by the spirit and answers will come look the lady did not call me i was still wondering this is not the first person either the second person that have said they have seen me in their dreams and some people have never seen them before i bet you i've never seen them before they have looked for my number and they called me they'll say that's some number i was praying to god for something and while i was sleeping and i saw you in my dream you appeared and you were telling me read this book read this book and you said kneel down and you were praying for me i have never seen them so you know if people call me i don't even ask them who is this if they told me, if they should tell me their name, I will. But I don't, I've never asked why I came again. I'll just say hello. In our list, I'll say fine. Now the only matter I'm okay, I'm listening. The Lord will do it. That's all I do. I don't ask names. There is a lady that has been calling me for two, three weeks. Now, I never knew she was in Kano before, but she's now in another state. She was calling me from that state. I will only answer and will pray. It was this afternoon her sister called me that my sister has been calling you from so so I said, is she your sister? She has been calling me, me, I don't know. You know when you provoke things in the spirits, your spirit goes. I said your real you is not you that is seated. Your real you is spirits. Your real you, the first creation of God, is the spirit man before he imputes us into a mold. This is just a container to be housed on earth because this earth has a system of oppression. No spirit is allowed to operate in this earth without the body. The real you is the spirit. That is why men will see you by the spirit because the real you has gone on exile, has gone to fulfill the works of the Father, the burdens in your heart, the burdens in our spirit. It flees out of us. We might be sleeping, but our spirit man is not there. You might see our body lying down. Oh, there is a breath, but the spirit man is not there. It has gone on assignment. The bodies of a father. 
I have by the spirits seen great men of God, seen people that have gone ahead, people of like Ketrukulma have come to me by the spirit and we sat down we were discussing. These are people that died hundreds of years ago. There is a burden of the spirit. I get burdened. I say, how did this man throw on this earth? How did they rot this anointing? How did they rot these miracles? Signs and wonders. And that burden arises me. And when I drown by the spirit, when I pray by the spirit in the night, lay brandos kapaya, and I will lie down, and they will appear, and they will begin to speak to me. Somebody like Apostle Babalola appeared to me. I have never seen him in real life. He died long before I was even born. But that man came to me. Why? There is a burden in the heart. 